Hello. This is a second case which we are discussing today. Slightly different to the earlier, but also addresses a few important points. One, a married woman, eight years of primary infertility, patent tubes, around eight antral follicles per ovary, teratozoos permia, six cycles of clomiphene, 100 mg to the maximum, IUI done without any success, three cycles of HMG with IUI, and I believe it is a combination of HMG and letrozole, the eight dominant follicle, and there was a good endometrium. FSH and LH we are not aware of, AMH I believe was 3.7 which was quite good, mild PCO pattern, IUI post wash was normal and 17 million. The questions asked is what is the rule of drilling, how to get more follicles and what treatment options should be done. So let's go back to the first thing. One, it is unexplained infertility. What does evidence tell us about unexplained fertility for such a long time? Young woman, with unexplained infertility, we know that the best treatment is intrauterine insemination and the treatment is with gonadotrophins. This has been proved extremely well and this has been tried. How many treatments can you give? Anything between three to six. It seems that three cycles of ovulation induction or superovulation may give, give us a reasonably good pregnancy rate. And if you look at the study done at our hospital at the Homerton, we demonstrated that in unexplained infertility, using intrauterine insemination with gonadotrophins in three cycles gave you a live birth of 27%, which is extremely good. The question here comes, it's eight years is a long time. She's had th nine cycles of IUI. If you look at the other study, done in Australia, it demonstrates even with clomiphene, you can get a significantly better pregnancy rate. It's better than nature, though other studies have not demonstrated this. So my question here would be that, yes, you can get more follicles. The only way you can get more follicles is to break the FSA threshold of more follicles. Again, it comes to the basis that if you're going to use a combination of drugs of clomiphene or HMG in combination, or you give 75 of HMG or FSH, you are more likely to get between one and two follicles unless it's a PCO patient. Now, in this case, I would slightly differ in an approach. I would always suggest to an FSH and LH. Why? Because they both tell you a story. The AMH tells you a different story. The antral follicle count tell you a different story. It is very important to realize that every investigation that we do tells us something different about the ovary. I'm not here to answer your questions how, and on my entire training, if you look, see my trainees, it is my job is not to teach you how. That's the simplest. Hundreds of IVF clinics function about how to do things. That is not reproductive medicine, that is IVF. And IVF is extremely simple. It's a reproductive medicine. Then you question why is this happening? Why is it that the follicles are not growing as I wanted? Why is it only one follicle growing? And this is an interest that has to be generated. And my entire teaching revolves around getting you to answer the question why. Now here, you need to break the FSS threshold of multiple follicles. She's got 16 antral follicles. And my worry is that if you increase the dose of FSH, which will break the threshold of more follicles, you're more likely to get multifollicular growth. Again, if you have two or three follicles growing, your pregnancy rates go up from 11.5% to close to 16.5%. So there's clearly, it demonstrates a much higher pregnancy rates. And again, there is good evidence about this. Next, do you drill the ovaries? I would say, please don't. The reason here is, I don't know, some of you all must have heard my lecture on ovarian drilling. Is there a future? Yes, 
There is a future for ovarian drilling. But if you choose your cases well, there is a general set of guidelines which I suggest that you follow, including that of LH. But what does LH tell you? LH demonstrates your theca side. The entire role of ovarian drilling is to lower the LH level. And if you do not have a high LH, if you do not have a high theca component, you will be destroying the ovary. Step back. Gonadotrophins do much better. Lastly, she's had nine cycles of IUI. She's had eight years of trying for a baby. It's time we upgrade treatment. It's time you head towards IVF or head towards IVF and ICSI. I think you've done well. You've got a very good post wash sample. You have got stimulated the ovary well. The endometrium is good. Dominant follicles on day 8, though if your cycles are regular, I would generally suggest triggered by day 11 or day 12, and that's the, the difference I would suggest. But otherwise, I think it's time to move on. Now, as in my earlier talk, I would suggest that one is, there is a lot to learn about ovarian drilling. And those days are gone that you should not be doing ovarian drilling without an ovarian volume, without an antral follicle count, without having your FSH, LH, an androgen profile, and an AMH level. Ovarian drilling is destruction of an ovary. And unless you're certain that you can lower the LH significantly, only then you do ovarian drilling. You should know that within a week of doing ovarian drilling, AMH levels drop, ovarian volume drops. You can ask many of those who attend my lectures on the course and there's almost 45 minutes in which I, I talk about ovarian drilling, when to drill the ovaries, how much and in which cases. I hope you can share this talk across. Thank you very much and have a good day.